we have this M3 Touring and it's going with us on a road trip. We're going from London to Chamonix to Switzerland. We're going to do all three mountain passes in the Alps, Furka, Grimsel and Susten. I've wanted to do this for a long time and what a car to do it in. The M3 Touring is a 510 bhp monster, 0 to 62 in just 3.5 seconds, 4 wheel drive, plenty of boot space and this should make for a pretty awesome car for this trip. After disembarking in France we hit the motorway. We did plenty of auto driving with the level 2 autonomous features on the M3 and then we made our first stop in Arras for a quick bite to eat. We rested, went to sleep and the following morning we were back on the road towards Chamonix. I had plenty more motorway driving to cover, but I barely did any kind of driving. I knew the M3 would come alive in the Swiss Alps, but for this long, monotonous drive, the auto drive was a godsend. Letting the car do most of the work was really good because it meant I was going to be fresh when we arrived at Chamonix. Once we arrived at Chamonix, we parked the car, unloaded the bags, took in the views from the room and just looked at what Chamonix had to offer. It is such a beautiful little place. Rooted at the bottom of Mont Blanc, Chamonix is a very well-known town all year round. Skiing at the winter and many people come here to hike the mountain trails when the weather is good like it was when we arrived and the snow has of course melted. But before we set off to Switzerland, we had to take a trip to the top of Mont Blanc. It's a must do if you come to this area and at its peak, you're sitting at 3,800 meters above sea level and you get a fantastic view of Chamonix from the top. The following morning, however, it was time to enjoy driving as we headed to our first mountain pass. And so, as beautiful as Chamonix is, this is also pretty spectacular. Welcome to the Furka Pass. Now, this is a pass that I have never done before and it's a place that I've always wanted to come to. You can probably see directly ahead is the hotel where we're going to have our first stop because we're doing Furka, Grimsel and a bit of Susten as well. Now we are very fortunate today because the weather is pretty spectacular. We've got incredible weather to climb Mont Blanc and now being here in the BMW M3 Touring I get the opportunity to really enjoy some of these roads. Now already I can see just how twisty the mountain passes are and it gives me a chance to stretch the legs a little bit on the M3 because this car has been absolutely phenomenal on this trip. Genuinely, it's been sensational. And of course, 510 brake horsepower here, three and a half seconds to 60. It's just such a weapon. And one thing that I have to say about this car, yes, first of all, it's 100 grand, um, 89 base, uh, 11 grand's worth of options, seven of which are the carbon ceramics, two and a half of which, no, six are carbon ceramics, two and a half are the frozen grey paint, which looks incredible. <sighs> what a thing. But this car turns so many heads, it is not even funny. The amount of heads this has turned on this road trip, and I've done a lot of road trips, but this specific M3 Touring, everyone loves it, and I can see why. We love it. And that's one of the biggest draws for the M3 Touring for me, is to do stuff like this, to, to go and enjoy a road trip. Because you have so much space in this car, and she is a hero to do a mountain pass on a bike. You have so much space in this car, boot space is vast. This is a competition. So it is four wheel drive, you only get the four wheel drive model in the UK. And my word, is it just a brilliant, brilliant thing. The, the M3 has X-Drive, so you can set it to four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive sport, rear-wheel drive, that's completely up to you. But for me, four-wheel drive is plenty, and oh my word, look at the views. Beautiful. I can't get over this weather, and these roads are awesome. I must say though, driving to the Furka Pass, the roads leading up to it have been very, very busy, loads of road work. So I would say if you really want to enjoy this, like I'm doing now, get up nice and early to do the whole of it. I'm being very fortunate right now because I haven't got anything in front of me, but expect traffic. So what's the M3 like to drive, handling wise? Because it isn't the lightest car in the world, but it disguises its way extremely well. I took one of these to the Nürburgring and in touring form, it is still 
just as good as I remember it, if not better, because of the practicality and because of the looks. <laughs> and so kind of midway up the Furka Pass, we are here right now at the Hotel Belvedere, which is an absolute joke. And the first thing I need to do before we park up is get a nice photo. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Head southeast towards Fergusstrasse. The views from the abandoned Hotel Belvedere or Furka Pass are spectacular, and as you would expect, many people come here to take the iconic photo with the hotel and its hairpin, as many try to recapture the scene filmed in James Bond Goldfinger and Sean Connery did a similar thing. Oh, well that was nice, so just see, I don't know if you can see there, it's a nice black 695 SA SA, and um, yeah. He, uh, he watches my videos, but to be fair, he spotted the M3 Touring before he spotted me, because like I said, we just stopped up for a quick coffee. I let the guy in his little camper van thing pass. Um, coffee's expensive up there and it's cash only, so if you do come up here, make sure you bring cash. My wife thinks of everything. I would have been stuck there, but you get such beautiful views of the pass. And uh, now we're gonna head back down here and uh, we're gonna do Grimsel. So, uh, Let's go and have a little bit of a, a blast down because, like I said, the Touring for me is such a good car. And the thing with this car, the beauty of it is with the carbon ceramics, most of the time I'd say you don't need carbon ceramics, but for stuff like this, this is where it's at, right? What a thing, what a thing. And of course, I'm currently running M2, which is everything set to Sport Plus, braking, steering, the lot. And around these twisties, it's what makes the M3 such a versatile car. And like, I came I came away from this, well, when I drove the M3 uh, Comp, the non-touring variant, to the Nürburgring with my friends, I thought it was an absolutely incredible machine. But driving it now on this road trip, I've just got like a newfound love for it even more. And, and like I said, with the touring, in touring spec, you get so much practicality. And, and I even like the little hatch that you've got on the back as well, but oh, what a thing. And to be honest, it is so fast. It is so fast, it's probably too fast if I'm being completely honest with you for stuff like this. And also bear in mind that in Switzerland, you can't really speed. So if you're coming here to go with great land speed records, you could just about have enough, you could have as much fun in like a small little car because this here will get your license gone. <laughs> oh, this is just a pleasure, driving pleasure at its best. Okay, so here's the Grimsel Pass and I'm gonna do this in as much quiet as possible so you can just listen to the M3 for a bit, so enjoy. Climbing the Grimsel Pass was definitely fun, and when you get to the top and begin your descent, you start to see the lakes and the dams. We got slightly unlucky with the rain, but that's something you're just going to have to be used to. The weather at this kind of altitude can be very unpredictable, so prepare for all outcomes. And so now you find me on the final mountain pass, which actually, if I'm honest with you, 
It's probably my favorite one. This is the Suston one. The Grimsel one you probably saw from the time lapse is quite, uh, it's, it's lovely, it's quite flat. This one, however, is very, very much, it's very picturesque and it feels more, more like a road, if I'm completely honest with you, with plenty of switchbacks, as you can see here. <laughs> and I've got a little Abarth behind me as well, but wow. It's just a nice feeling. I mean, look at the scenery, the roads, they're just spectacular. And I think if you, are, if, if you said to me you can only do one of these passes, I would recommend this one, Suston Pass. And we're not even at the top yet. Plenty of hairpins. You feel like you're in Monaco all the time, like this. Power out and you're greeted by another left-hander. It's just, it's a great driver's pass. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. This is quite a technical pass. It reminds me, um, it reminds me quite a lot of the road I did with Joe uh, in France. The, um, oh, what's it called? Red Rock Road, in fact. Very technical, really, really good fun in the car kind of stuck in low gears an awful lot. You don't really go that fast. Well, you can, but you're gonna risk your life and you just gotta be stupid to do that. You kind of sit here, hover around, you know, the speed limit's 80, you don't really go much more than that, if I'm completely honest with you. And it is just a pleasure to drive. So, made it to the top of the system pass, having a recharge, hashtag not sponsored, I wish I was. And uh, yeah, it's, there isn't that much really to do up here, if I'm completely honest. Um, you've got the tunnel through there. We're going to head back down the pass that we came on. Uh, you can see the M3 just, well, no, it's covered by the, the truck. But you can see it's, um, yeah, man. Overall, overall, what are my thoughts on these three mountain passes? I... I, I, I'm kind of impressed, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't so sure at first, which is kind of sacrilege considering the fact that if you watch YouTube, you see everybody raving about the mountain passes. But they were quite busy. I still stand by, if you really want to get the most out of these passes, is make sure that you come early uh, and also be careful because they're closed from, I think it's, is it March? March to October because of snow, obviously. Because um, obviously we're quite high. I'm in a t-shirt because it's still about 15 degrees up here but we are getting unusually warm weather um but yeah overall it's been it's been amazing and um the m3 what a car what an absolute weapon um like i said it blows my mind every time i drive that thing it's just so good so good at everything it does uh, if you want a proper review of it this isn't the channel for it go and watch joe joe achilles has one of those he does proper reviews on the cars uh, for me this is more about the experience and i've loved it you know for me having a car it's all about where you take it, where you experience it. And I think that places like this are exactly where you should be taking your car because look at it, absolutely unreal. But anyway, it's a quick pit stop and we're heading back down. Descending the Suston Pass in this time-lapse shows you just how much fun you would have if you brought your own car here or your bike. The mountain passes in the Alps really are incredible driving roads and I was so grateful to have been able to have the opportunity to do them in such a good car, although I would love to do this in my Porsche 911 that I've just bought. To summarise, the BMW M3 Touring is a brilliant bit of kit. I love it in all areas bar its price. A hundred grand is pretty steep for what is ultimately a BMW estate, but it's a lot of car for the money. If you have that kind of money, it's 100% a buy for me. If you want to see some of what Switzerland has to offer, then head over to my Instagram account and check out my highlights reel, where you can see just how stunning Switzerland is and what you can get up to if you choose to go there. But thank you so much for watching this road trip, and I'll see you very soon on the next video.